What's up? This is my review of the Benchmade 945 Mini Osborne, aka the 945BK-1. So some specs real quick. This has a 2.92 inch blade length or 74.2 millimeters. The thickness is 0.104 inches or 2.642 millimeters. Uh, open, the length is 6.76 inches or 171.7 millimeters and closed. It's 3.84 inches or 97.54 millimeters. It weighs about 2.19 ounces or 62.09 grams. And the handle thickness is 0.425 inches or 10.795 millimeters. This has S30V steel with G10 handles and a reverse Tonto blade, which has Cerakote coating or Cerakote. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And it does come with a mini split arrow clip. I do not have that on it right now. I have the, this is the clip that comes with it. And I put a mini deep carry clip on it, which is found on knives like the bug out. Um, you would also notice that this has a blue thumb stud and it does come with a black one, but uh, for me, the blue looks much better. It goes really well with the blue standoffs and the blue G10. And I actually uh, wanted to put a black lock bar as well because this silver seemed kind of out of place with all the rest of the harbor being black. And I did have one, which is right here. And I had that in there, but uh, this is from Etsy. And I don't know, I'd, it said it would fit the 945 and someone else put, had it in theirs, but I mean, I looked at it. It looked a little bit different. It was actually a tad, um, I think a little bit longer. So I wasn't sure if it, and it kind of like was wiggling around a bit more than this one. Cause this one still wiggles a bit which is necessary for access locks to work. Um, but I don't know, I like I like the silver though, kind of now. It's like a nice accent because bla all black is kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't pop as much as all black, but the blue thumb stud for sure is really nice. So I've had this knife for about three weeks, uh, give or take a few days. So I've used it for a decent amount of cutting. We've cut stuff like paper, cardboard, plastic, just EDC stuff. I'm not really, you know, someone's going to take this knife out into the wilderness and go batoning with it or anything. Um, so my first impressions would be that I was initially worried about the size of this knife. Um, to give you some perspective, this is, let's see, the Elementum, a QSP Penguin. It's not a frame, sorry about that. So these are all like kind of the size of kni knives that I like, especially for my hand size. Uh, this knife is about seven inches, so is this one. Um, and also a bug out, and forgive me, this is, this does not have the access lock in it right now because my Omega spring actually broke, one of them broke. So this is just for size comparison. Um, so pivot to pivot, obviously the bug out's a little longer and I was worried because I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to get a full grip on it, but I ordered the knife and then I went to an REI and I tried it out in the store and it was perfect. Um, this knife, uh, seven inches long total, and this is using a little like kind of half choil thing here. Even if I go all the way back here, I get a good grip. My, my hands are not the biggest. They're from here to here, about seven inches long. So it was totally fine. And I definitely prefer it over the normal 940 size. That was a bit too long for me. And as you can see, you can get a full four finger grip. That's, it's not even a half a twirl. It's just a little spot there. You can use that or you can go right here and I get a grip, full grip either way. Obviously for, if I wanted like a, a lot more purchase, then I would not use a knife this small though still. Like I, I would probably use something like a paramilitary two or even that'd be too big. Maybe just one of these knives, like this knife, plenty of room. This one feels like, like it's good, but like if my hands were any larger, then I would be, it would be a little too small. And this does have a nice kind of slant here. So I don't know, like it, it makes it, if you're right here and you're almost falling off, your pinky kind of can just stay there and it's, it feels really good. Um, 
uh, but this does change, the size changes how you hold it when you close it, so uh, can't really obviously use the access lock on this knife, but if I'm going to close it, I kind of hold it like here, right? Like it's in my palm like this. This knife, it's kind of more inside, like my, my palm is different, like uh, it'd be in a different spot based on my hand, a different shape, but you figure, you figure out when you get used to it. Uh, Sorry, when you get the knife, you get used to it, like, really quickly. Um, so, oh, and lastly, what I what I really did to uh, basically, like, confirm the size was good, uh, I took a knife that was even smaller, which is the Victorinox Compact. This is just a 91 millimeter uh, Swiss Army knife. And, of course, it's smaller, right? But I'm able to get a good, you know, grip on this. And closed, it's even smaller than this knife when it's closed. So that's how I knew it was fine before I even got it. So QC wise, you know, Benchmade's QC is not known for being the best. I think it's improved recently is what I've heard. Um, the centering, sorry, this is my first time recording with this kind of rig, but yeah, so it's good, right? Perfect centering. And if it ever came off by a little bit, I can just do this the trick from Best Sam EDC where you would push the blade to the side where it's drifting towards. So like basically, if this is too far to the right, then you'd open it, push the blade to the right, loosen the handle screws, and then retighten them, and then it would fix itself. It's actually worked for me every single time. Um, it has no play now. I mean, it didn't have play when I got it. I, I'm pretty... OCD about stuff like that, so I'll, you know, do this all the time and keep readjusting, adjusting, lock tightening, disassembling, etc. I bought it from, it was brand new, and I bought it from a user on Reddit who sells knives a lot, and he did a little tune-up for me, just which means, because he put the thumb set on, then he just opened it, like, cleaned it out, lubed it, just the usual. And I've disassembled and reassembled it many times, and, you know, eventually where it is now is perfect. Obviously, I had to go through the the bench made break-in period with the access lock. Um, this is a stainless steel lock bar, which is good because steel on steel is good. I don't know why they use titanium in the bug outs because titanium on steel tends to get a little sticky. Um, and the washer orientation when you're disassembling it actually matters because uh, the side that's touching the blade once you break in the washers um, you have to make sure that side is still touching the blade when you reassemble it, or else the knife will basically be, you know, like you didn't even spend a lot of time breaking it in. And of course, it had lock stick, but I mean, I got rid of that pretty quickly, just opening it. Uh, I I initially was using it with this uh, lock bar, and then I switched back to this one. So all, all the lock stick was removed, I guess, with this one. Um, grind wise, it. I mean, it's, you know, production knife, so it's not going to be totally, totally perfect. It is a little off. I don't know if you could tell, but it's a little bit bigger on this side than this side, which, and it's just cosmetic, it doesn't matter. And at the tip, the grind is good. Perfect there. Um, my bug out, for instance, the grind is not perfect. Obviously, you can't expect it to be super perfect either. But this is a little a little off. But it doesn't bother me. It bothers me now at least. But I mean it could always be sharpened out as well. Uh so edge wise it you could use a little bit of a touch up out of the box. So I put on the sharp maker a little bit, fine stones, ultra fine, stropped it. And now it's my sharpest knife. It took an edge really well. I mean if you want to cut demonstration I guess so really really sharp and uh, aesthetics wise though I really like this knife the black with the blue g10 I like just looking at it first the black thumbs I'm like oh okay like it's okay but then I saw the blue standoffs and the blue G10 inside, and I was like, okay, that looks much better. And with the blue thumb set, it just really, really popped. Um, the normal 940 
with the green aluminum and the purple backspacer. I'm not really that big of a fan of. Um, the blade shape is, I don't know, I, I never had this kind of blade shape before either, so it was, it was okay, it was kind of new to me. I, I, I like it now, it's and it definitely matches the overall handle shape and aesthetic of the of the 940. And uh, I did like, I think, I, I don't know, I think I still like the bug out blade more. This shape, this, and I kept the teeth taking the sharp band off because there's no lock, so the knife will just, you know, flop around, I don't wanna cut myself. But this drop point shape is is really nice as well. So I don't know. It, this obviously though, if you you can't interchange these two, you couldn't put this blade shape on this knife and next, like it, it just wouldn't look right. So it definitely matches what the 940 Osborne like family is trying to you know represent. I guess not represent, but like how it looks. It that the aesthetic of the knife is very. I think it's very iconic. Um. And I do also prefer the blue standoffs to the the backspacer in the normal 940. Just like the purple backspacer. I, I, I always like having standoffs instead of backspacers in my knives. It just looks better. I think all of my knives have that. Like this knife, the Elementum, the Penguin, and the Bug Out all have backspacers. And even this knife too, the CGRB. My Leah, it's a smaller knife. This knife actually is even smaller. And I'm oh, sorry, out of frame. My bad. And I was able to you know, like, I couldn't get a total like this is you know even smaller. I'm, I'm almost slipping off right here. Uh, I definitely couldn't do it if I was not going to use this little tiny choil. So, but I, could, I was having no problems with this knife. So since I could use that one, I could definitely also use this one. Um. So, in terms of the clip aesthetics, I think the split arrow clip looks cool, but obviously I like deep carry clips on my knives, so I had to in instantly change it out because it, it just doesn't carry deep enough. And it does go, I mean, obviously because of design, but it does go down a bit farther onto the handle because of where it sits. So it looks, I don't know, I'll, I'll take it out of the bag for you. I'll show you. So this, I'll put on this side, right? Let's say we have the clip here. It's, yeah, it, go, it comes down a bit. I mean, it's like any farther than this kind of look, would look ridiculous on this size knife. Obviously, if it's the normal 940, then it looks a bit more in scale. But either way, it's about the functionality for me. So I put the mini deep carry clip on. Um, and the overall size of the knife does look good. Like it looks proportionate. Um, some knives, when they make a miniature version of them, tend to look awkward. Not benchmade, necessarily, but, uh, like, for instance, like, the Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3. A lot of people said that the Paramilitary, the para, para 3 looks like it's just a, just shrunken down version of the Paramilitary 2 in terms, like, they literally took a picture and just, like, dragged it down because it looks a bit awkward, like it is it, it kind of like the blade is kind of stubby and the handle is a bit longer. This knife looks very well proportioned and not awkward to me at all. Um, so now after owning it for a few weeks, I will give you my take on the functionality. So how does it cut? It cuts very well. The blade shape is a bit sturdier than the bug out for sure. Um, the blade stock, I mean, it, it's just as thin. I think it's just as thin. Um, it's, I think they've, I think I've seen them measure before. They're just as thin, but obviously the shape, this just look, you know, it's more, I guess, sturdy right here versus this one comes with very fine. Oh my God. My other fucking frame. Sorry. Very sturdy right here. And this one is more of a delicate drop point. Uh, obviously this is more slicey than the, the Osborne. But uh, it doesn't really matter for me. Like what I do, it works perfectly. I'm not, I'm not going to notice a difference. Um, I usually just cut paper and plastic. Like I've opened clamshell packaging. It just glides right through it. And uh, I've, I was even cutting a, a pen refill. Like the end of a refill. It was pretty thick plastic. And it just obviously took a little bit to get in there and just chopped it down. Um, 
and I was even breaking down some large cardboard boxes and this, you know, ate right through the cardboard. Uh, the coating has been holding up pretty well too. The S30V did take a very sharp edge and so it cuts great in that regard and it's not in insanely hard to sharpen. Um, for how it feels, again, I was worried about the size, but it feels good and I don't have any problems with it at all. It's not uncomfortable at all. People were saying that they were hesitant to switch to the mini deep carry clip because it created a hot spot for them and they you know, gripped it really hard like this. I don't have that problem. It kind of feels, it basically feels like a mini bug out, right? So to me, there's no difference or if there is a difference, it's very negligible between this and the mini split arrow clip. And uh, again, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to be gripping my knife this hard to, to where it even induces a hot spot in my daily use. So that does not really matter to me. Um, the G10, the lightweight nature of this is really nice. Uh, my bug out, this is the Blade XQ exclusive, so it has G10 instead of the Grivery. They're about the same weight, like a little, like like 2.2 ounces maybe. And I, to me, it's negligible from 1.8 to 2.2. Um, all my knives are, I mean, this is about, I think my heaviest knife is probably the Penguin, which is like 3.2 ounces. And even then, it's not that big of a deal for me. Probably because this has full seal liners, not skeletonized. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's like basically bug out tier weight. I mean, I don't know how much a half of an ounce is going to make a difference for day-to-day -day use. Um, and of course it has great fidget factor. You know, usual bench made drop shut action. And the S30V, again, I mean, I only other bench I have to compare it to is this one, which is 20 CV steel. And this is much harder to sharpen than the S30V. Obviously, S30V is not the easiest thing. It's not like, you know, Victorinox steel, like that soft, but um, I haven't, also haven't gotten it really, really dull to see how long it would take me from, you know, dull to completely sharp uh, and as for the materials and construction g10 is my favorite scale material for like any knife so far um, and i definitely prefer it to the grivery or on the bug out of the aluminum on the 940 um, the steel is good and the benchman heat treat for s30v is good but um for the price i don't know if it was worth it and i'll get to that in a bit um this has longer liners than the bug out i mean I always just compare it to the bug out, right? Because of the size and also it's another really popular knife and the other benchmark that I have. Um, if you can see there, that's where, the, where that screw is where the liner stops. Uh, another thing about this knife aesthetically, I don't know why, but the screws they use protrude through the liner or the, the scale rather. On this knife, they are basically flush. So I don't know why that is, I don't know, maybe they needed to use that screw because if it was any shorter, it couldn't su uh, successfully hold it in. But um, so the liner goes through about here. Obviously it's not a full, you know, a full steel liner like this knife, just all the way, right? Um, so I think it is a good compromise between weight and also uh, rigidity of the knife. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with uh, dialing in blade play, like the lockup and stuff. Because this, like, I have been, this is my second iteration of this knife. I sold the first one I had and bought another one. And I still have not gotten it to be have, like dialed in where I like, have no blade play and good action. And the, yeah, again, the liner is about right there. So I don't know. But there is one one issue with this, though. If the liner goes all the way to here, so you have to, when you take it apart, you have to take out this standoff at the top or else you can't get it past the the liner. So it's just an extra step. Um, but also the screws, I mean, this is not really specific to this knife. Same thing with the bug out. I mean, T6 screws are notoriously known for stripping, but I've disassembled this many, many times and... They have not stripped yet, so that's good. Obviously, the paint, the coating has come off of these black screws, which it's obviously my fault. I've, I'm crazy. I've, I've just opened it way too many times, but that's besides the point. Um, so now, 
is it worth it? So this knife retails for 174 25 you know, in places like Blade HQ. And on the Benchmade website, it's $205. Um, for that much, I think S30V is a bit underwhelming. So, I mean, it is a new knife. It's relatively new. Uh, this year, they're coming out with the aluminum version, uh, like the old green one. And Butter Benchmade has their butterfly tax. But, I mean, like, the Mini Grip, the 556-1, the same price at Blade HQ, and it has 20 CV in G10 scales. So, I don't know. And I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Like, because I know Benchmade prices are really high, but I feel like they could have upgraded the seal on this knife for that price. But, again, you have to look at how much they're charging for the 940 already. And this knife, it retails for 212 well, I got it for 150 uh, so that was a couple months ago. That's a really good deal for this. Um, so I don't know. I, I think maybe this could have been like 130 to 150 I don't know. Uh, and the mini split arrow clip does not carry deep enough at all for me. But I think that's just to match the style of the Osborne knives. But, it, you know, it's easily remedied. You just get a mini deep carry clip. I also don't know why they didn't go with the blue thumb stud. It, it just, I know it seems like it's an obvious choice to me, especially if they're putting these blue standoffs. Uh, and I do not, well, I do like how the lock bar is stainless steel, what I meant to say. I, I do like the titanium ones in the bug out. I don't know why, again, they do that. It's steel on titanium. They're not saving any weight. And uh, titanium is lighter, but the, the axis lock bar is so tiny, it's not going to make a difference. And I did get this knife a little bit cheaper than the retail price. Uh, I bought it on KnifeSwap subreddit. Um, so it was 163 shipped for me. That's including the five bucks with thumb set. So it'd be 158. This goes for about, you know, 150, 160 on there. That's shipped. So that's, you know, there's no other charges or anything. I don't think I would have paid, wanted to pay, you know, close to $200 after taxes if I bought it from like Blade HQ because 174 plus tax. And I definitely would not have bought this at Benchmade's $205 asking price before taxes. That's crazy. But overall, I do like the knife and it is comparable or comparable. I'm not sure. Comparable, comparable to the mini bug out, which I don't have. But I tried one out the same day and that knife, I thought it would be too small too. But it surprisingly feels pretty good. It's comparable to that knife and uh, even the full size bug out for me personally. And it's a good size for my hands. And, um, again, I wear a medium size glove, and this, you know, here to here, seven inches. Um, but it may not be good for larger, uh, people with larger hands. And again, I do think it's a bit pricey for the materials. Um, I, I did not struggle to get this one tuned in as much as I have with the bug out. And again, I don't know, like I, I got the G10 version of the bug out because I thought the grivery would be a bit too flimsy for in terms of like lockup, which I don't, I probably don't think it matters, like has anything to do with it, the scale material versus lockup. But um, I don't know, this one actually was able to work for me and I've gone through two of those bug outs and I still have not gotten where I wanted them to be. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, this time just feels sturdier. People, I see people like taking the driver and just like pinching it to where it touches itself and I, Literally, I went to the store, and I tried to do that with a knife, and you have to press pretty damn hard to even get the grivery to, not even, not touch itself, but, you know, flex in. So I don't know why people are kind of over-exaggerated with that. Maybe I'm just weak, I don't know. But, um, yep, it's very capable knife. It's lightweight, stylish. I would definitely recommend the knife. Uh, Deep carry clip versus the stock clip, that's up to you. What, how you like to carry it. Both clips are just as functional. Um, you do, it doesn't matter which clip you have, you do have to remove the clip to get access to the screw that would be on this side for the other liner when you disassemble it. Um, this knife, you don't have to do that. It's right here. That is one thing. So there's two extra, actually a couple extra steps you have to do. Two screws here, this screw, and the standoff screw on this, on both sides to get the standoff out. So that is a little extra work for disassembling it. Plus the uh, stop pin right here 
is just attached to the other inlay, no, in, insert. Like this one, you, you have to unscrew it so it comes out. This one is just attached to the that other liner. Um, but yeah, so Benchmade 945 Mini Osborne. Definitely would recommend the knife. And thanks for watching.